Good morning and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Greg Yatman. I'm also the icon for Team Salona in this particular webinar. Uh, we're joined by Step CG and then our expert from Salona, Ozer. I'll introduce those guys in just a second. But the discussion today is around bringing the benefits of 5G lands to the enterprise. So we brought our best and brightest to the table. They are our speakers today. So Todd Kelly, SVP of Engineering at Step CG. Dan Gregory, uh, the Private Cellular Program Director at Step CG. And as I mentioned, Ozer Dondermashialu who is our VP of Marketing here at Salona. Between these three, they will dive deep into private 5G in the enterprise. And before we get into their content, uh, I need to give you a little bit of webinar logistics or housekeeping. Now, at any time in this platform, you are able and allowed to submit questions. So ask, uh, please do that. Uh, we like to have this interactive. In addition to that, there is a chat function which you can try out. Uh, this chat is enabling folks to just have little conversations with themselves, to interact with the hosts and other attendees. Please feel free to use that as well. We like this, again, to be as interactive as possible. There will be poll questions. There will be two poll questions, as a matter of fact. Uh, we ask that you do participate with that as well. We like to have the feedback from you and also use that as some of our Q&A. Uh, additionally, the presentation slides will be available to you in PDF format afterwards. The session is also being recorded. Uh, you will receive the link. You can also visit this at any time or share this link uh, with others so they can watch it. And finally, uh, at salona.io backslash journey, uh, you can always see more about Salona, our technology, and what we're doing with our partners in action. So without further ado, let me hand over to some of the stars of the show. Uh, Step CG, Todd Kelly, uh, Dan Gregory, it's all yours. Hey, thanks, Greg, and thanks, everyone, for joining uh, my name is Todd Kelly. I'm the SVP of engineering here at Step CG. And Dan, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Dan Gregory, and I am the um, wireless business development manager for Step CG. Um, great to see everyone today, and I uh, look forward to the presentation. Awesome. Well, listen, we'll get right into it. We have a lot of content and this is all about everyone on this call. But hey, you know, it is midday. And, and for some of us, some of us, maybe it's in the morning, some of it's a little later. I'm based in the Chicagoland area. And I'm just curious in the chat, you see down to the right, just so you guys can interact. How many people are in single digits or below zero? Just put an up arrow there. Uh, I think we're above zero now here in Chicago. So uh, the up arrow, everybody's probably looking for a down arrow. But hey, man, we get to live with this. Uh, just wondering how cold everyone is. We're going to warm you up with some microwave technology here with micro slicing pretty soon. But just, just want to see how many people are in the cold climates. Um, go ahead and put that in there. Uh, I'd be interested in seeing that. Oh, 79 Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's fantastic. Ooh. Cool. Over, let's see. Yeah, we got some very cold weather for people in different parts of the world, it looks like. All right, we'll get going as you guys put that in there. Um, and, and while you're doing that, just a little background on Step CG. Um, and we're honored to be on this webinar with our host, Salona. Uh, we're a secure networking services company, um, you know, mid-sized company and, and uh, doing secure networking services. Um, we're based out of Covington, Kentucky, which is right across the river from Cincinnati. Uh, but we have customers all over the U.S. and uh, we're starting to to expand in other parts of the globe as well. We pride ourselves, obviously, in having some top engineering talent. Um, very early, eight years ago, when we were founded, we started with a uh, wired wireless background in, in networking, but also cellular and since our inception. So we have a really good talent uh, for any enterprise customer that's uh, or uh, state, local government or uh, education or healthcare customer. And as they go to adopt and communicate technologies, um, you know, cellular is a key piece of that. And we're here to talk about the 5G private cellular approach. Um, and we have experts in, in that uh, approach as well. We, in, in addition to just being professional services, uh, company and being able to implement these technologies and integrate them into an enterprise infrastructure, the same engineers that we have that that are doing that are also the ones that help you design it in a pragmatic way. And I'd say a lot of our expertise over the years with that cellular approach uh, is taking carrier technology and integrating it into the enterprise. 
And there's a lot of automation, a lot of capabilities there. And Salona definitely is one of those um, partners of ours that has taken that approach of taking carrier grade technology and making it adaptable for the enterprise, uh, much like fabric technology and other technologies that, that enterprises use to communicate. Uh, we have a built in 8,000 square foot innovation center. Uh, we'll, t we'll give you a picture of that. Um, we have definitely, besides the professional services, we also deliver managed services as well. Um, and, and we have different approaches for how we can do that with you as an enterprise customer and, and being able to consume that. Uh, real quick, this here's kind of just very simplified view of our business, cellular networking security. Um, you know, with all these kind of components, uh, we have these expertise uh, across our company. Um, and the cellular area, obviously, uh, in addition to Salona, we have Nokia, Ericsson, and Cradlepoint. Um, we usually go through a vetting process with our, our partners in our labs and, and uh, ourselves. So we usually don't try to uh, jump in without knowing things work really well. So uh, all these are our key vendors. Cradle Point, we're one of the few 5G certified vendors for 5G technology. Obviously, with with, uh, with Salona, we're, we're one of their emerging partners as well. And networking, we kind of have uh, uh, different partners here. Extreme, we're the global largest um, partner. And uh, in security, both physical, network security, large-scale NAC, we're really good at. But we also have a, a growing cybersecurity practice as well. So again, Step CG, really good at architecting, designing, installing, project managing, your private cellular technology and making that fit within your existing policy and enterprise networking for wired and wireless. Uh, we also have some unique capabilities in managing that for you. Uh, we leverage different technologies. Um, we have a dashboard technology and then rollout automation tool technology that makes it very easy for us and for you to have visibility about all the analytics, all the usage, where things are and how they're operating, not just up, down, but, but also their performance. So uh, that's kind of us. Here's a NASCAR slide. Uh, also, just take this point really quickly. In, in the chat menu, you can chat with us, but there's also a question uh, tab. So as you ask questions as we go through here, on the lower right corner, feel free to uh, ask them there as we go through the presentation. Our For Step CG, um, we really focus a lot of our business is state, local government, and education, both K through 12 and higher ed. Uh, as well as healthcare. I'd say those are probably our predominant ones. We've also have a, a growing number in retail and hospitality uh, and utilities and in transportation. Those, those are seem to be some emerging markets, especially for the private cellular and uh, 4G, 5G technology that we're here to talk to you about today. Um, let's see. And uh, just one thing, you know, as you think about 5G in the enterprise, and CBRS spectrum and where to use it. Ozer is going to go into that in a little bit. But one of the um, ways we validated the technology is is actually in in Kentucky. We're based there. Obviously, there's a big bourbon festival every year, and they came to us within a couple of weeks' notice and said, "Hey, listen, we need a, a whole network out where we're having this um, this venue." And and there was it was a very large venue with lots of different bourbon distilleries. And all of them separate. So they're kind of their own pop-up stores, if you will, and experiences. And they needed video surveillance. They needed point of sale. They needed access to the internet. Um, so we were able to come in uh, and actually set up a, a, a cellular on wheels, a cow we call it, that actually uh, used private cellular technology to serve all those use cases and then backhauled it over a 5G infrastructure. And all was uh, secured and segmented. Uh, while providing public Wi-Fi and general connectivity for the attendees and digital signage. So the technology works really well, especially with this micro slicing technology from Salona. As you go to add more things into this network, you can get deterministic quality of service, get good uh, segmentation security and isolation of these different use cases. And even in a case where you want to go out into a field, uh, where, where, where we have a generator and a cell on wheels, you can even do it out there. So it's it's a really cool technology to help solve business problems that um, that pop up from time to time and, and works really well. 
So before we get into the technology aspect, some of the use cases we see and get engaged in quite a bit, and I'll start at the right is uh, really K through 12 in smart city. It's remote learning digital divide initiatives. We've been doing a lot of these projects where we have underserved parts of our communities that don't have any broadband infrastructure and there's still students there trying to keep up with, you know, staying educated with the curriculum and their school districts. So a lot of the school districts have used some, uh, some funding to really put up anywhere from two to five different towers or, or points of presence to cover, you know, five square miles or, or, you know, under, I would say, to serve these communities and really just extend the classroom out into the uh, public and in, into the, their houses, really, in a secure way. And um, so, and, and reliable way with broadband so that nobody gets kind of left behind. So that's been a lot of initiatives as well as using this technology to serve points where fiber isn't like intersections and traffic lights and making things better for us all as, as, as we um, commute everywhere. Uh, Enterprise Outdoors is uh, in vehicle connectivity, uh, surveillance, computer vision, obviously venues we've been doing a lot. So where where it's really hard to deploy Wi-Fi in an open outdoor environment, private cellular 5G technology is really good use case. Has a lot of mobility, security, and and uh, performance that that you get without a lot of infrastructure. And then indoors has also been an emerging area for us. Um, you know, in indoors is is uh, one of the big use cases is segmenting your IoT. Uh, and your automation infrastructure from your indoor environment and getting that on something that's totally different than, than what you run your rest of your enterprise, as well as some different use cases and, and robotics and, and different areas of manufacturing and, uh, and utilities we've seen. So with that said, I, uh, if you do have questions, go ahead. I'm going to go forward. I think we have a, um, oh yeah, one more slide. Um, this is our just really good picture of our innovation center. If anybody's interested in seeing the Salona technology and seeing what's possible, this is where it happens. We actually have a bourbon bar. We kind of say that's that's where the real innovation happens, but um, that that is a really open environment and welcome anybody in, into this environment um, to, to see the technology. We have the technology running, some of the use cases, uh, and it's a nice area. It's easy to get in and out of CBG Airport or drive to, depending on where you are in, 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 in the U.S. or in the world. So with that said, I think we do have a poll to kind of get some information from you. Greg, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Todd. And we do have a poll. So aside from bourbon drinking, which I didn't put as a selection on here, which I think you're probably going to have to approach Dan or Todd directly uh, for some permission, uh, what type of services would, be, would you be most interested in partnering with them on? Uh, if you would not mind uh, popping in your selection now, uh, we can grab that stuff uh, and uh, we can circle back with it uh, towards the end of the session. So I'll give you a second to, to make your vote. All right, good. The votes are pouring in. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, folks. And um, with your answers and um, um, and your permission, I think we're going to move on into the next phase, which is introducing uh, one of my favorite superstars at Salona, Ozer Dondermashiolu. Ozer, if you wouldn't mind, how about we talk about industries, the industry's first 5G LAN solution? Let's do it. Uh, hello, everybody. Happy uh, Wednesday. Uh, for those of you in the cold, hope you're kind of sort of warm. Thanks for joining us. Great seeing you all in the new year. Uh, I couldn't have think thought about a better partner for us to kick off 2022. Um, and with a, with a joint webinar, Step CG team and us have been working very closely Towards the uh, later part of 2021, um, they were kind enough to so welcome our technology and us personally at their innovation center a couple of months ago. Uh, really great facility. Highly recommend any of you who are visiting um, Kentucky area to pay a visit. So, Todd, thanks for that um, very detailed introduction to Step CG. Really appreciate the partnership on the webinar. Um, and you know, we we are here to talk about a little bit of. Uh, technology, as you might imagine, 
we have dubbed our solution 5G LAN for a couple of reasons that I'm going to uh, dive into a little bit more. Um, the first year here at Solana, we spent on identifying the market dynamics, what's going on in the private seller, private 5G market in general, and where we can generate value. Uh, we spent our second year in defining our solution uh, and its value prop, and uh, we brought it to life. We started shipping over 12 months ago now, uh, and we kind of realized that we're really building a local area network technology for enterprise IT and OT environments. Um, so calling it a 5G LAN was just uh, quite quite simple uh, for us and for our customers and our partners to also understand where we fit in the grand scheme of private seller industry. Um, personally, I'm the VP of marketing here at Solana. I've been with the company for two and a half years. And for those of you who are new to Solana, we're a three-year-old uh, technology company here in the Bay Area, uh, California, getting close to 100 people and growing fast. And um, so far, we've seen a lot of demand from different industries that Todd also mentioned, um, and we'd like to see it grow with more partners and more community members and more customers in the days ahead. So uh, for you to be here with us, hearing our story means a lot. So thanks for supporting what we do and looking forward to continuing the conversation. Uh, after the after the webinar. So uh, with that, let me dive into uh, the presentation. Please feel free to post any questions about technology, about Step CG, um, about the industry uh, in the questions window. We might answer those live. We have a couple of folks from Step CG also on the line uh, using the chat window, or we might leave it till the end to, to answer them verbally. So how did our journey start? We really uh, thought of new key principles for private LTE 5G market. We said, you know, there is a way to deploy private seller using license spectrum in the enterprise, but with the arrival of CBRS, with the arrival of a private spectrum that enterprise can get access directly, could we take advantage of that? Could we create a separate, um, uh, you know, lane of communication within the enterprise, not necessarily only relying on license spectrum uh, for seller, but also private spectrum with CBRS. We said, if that private spectrum is available, if the enterprises have direct access to it, why don't we build a solution that can uh, protect and advocate enterprise ownership when needed? You can always consume this technology as a service. You could consume Wi-Fi or video cameras or firewalls as a service from your preferred managed service provider, but you also sometimes need the option for full enterprise ownership and operation. And that's what our system does. Both of those deployment models are possible. And we said, why do we treat private seller as something else in a grand scheme of enterprise network? Um, you know, why don't we make this a tightly integrated solution with the existing enterprise policies, configuration, systems that are already in place? You know, why don't we take advantage of the existing IP domains, existing layer two, layer three network configuration, VLANs and VXLANs, because IT teams already spend the time and effort building those systems up and operationalizing them. And they have a way of monitoring and supporting them. Why don't we fit right into that model? Um, so those were our key technology principles that we put together. And at the end of that, our 5G LAN solution came out. Um, we said, okay, let's look at this as an integrated um, approach. We can provide access points, physical SIM cards, embedded SIM cards, eSIM cards for the wireless connectivity. We do not provide devices, right? Tablets, phones, gateways to connect to the network. They will be provided by um, ecosystem partners like CradlePoint or Apple or Zebra. Uh, but we will be the wireless network infrastructure and we will provide uh, the capability, SIM provisioning capability, security capability for them to get on board to our network. Why don't we call these things access points instead of eNode Bs or GNode Bs and different terminologies in 3GPP so that it uses the enterprise lingo? Uh, why don't we make them integrate with an enterprise network infrastructure and manage from the cloud? So our mobile core software and our orchestration software, management software, including capabilities like uh, application level visibility, quality monitoring, end-to-end -end network configuration, 
um, MSB dashboard capabilities, they're all available to the administrator of our platform to use. There's no support line to call. There's no support ticket to create to make changes. You have direct access to the way the network is operating. Now, that uh, platform, that software platform, when combined with the access point, essentially becomes an end to end package that you can build your own uh, cellular network uh, wherever you want and whenever you want. It's a single package. Um, we uh, license our solution on a per access point basis. So the more access points you deploy, that's how the licensing model works. SIM cards are included, support and warranty are included, mobile core software is included, network management, API level access, MSP capabilities are all included as part of that subscription. There's no per data fees, per SIM card fees, uh, per usage fees. This is just your own uh, cellular network in your own facilities. So um, what makes a private cellular a 5G LAN? There are really five attributes. We essentially took cellular wireless concepts. We took 5G network slicing and we translated it to enterprise. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper on what micro slicing is. And I think Todd also gave a really good overview of what its value is. Uh, we took self-organizing wireless capabilities. We redesigned it for CBRS because CBRS is going to live within warehouses, within hospitals, within enterprise settings. So we had to improve cellular wireless self-organizing network functions to fit in private environments. We took SIM capabilities, very well-known SIM provisioning and security capabilities, but now we found a way to tie them to enterprise security policies. We took mobile core technology, 4G, 5G, unified mobile core software written by us. It's not licensed from any other vendor. It's developed by our engineering team. And we made it integrate, uh, not only with cellular wireless radios, but also with enterprise network configuration and settings. And last but not least, we took the layer of configuration for cellular wireless. 3GPP has hundreds of attributes and abbreviations and configuration knobs if you uh, would like to design an end-to-end -end wireless system. But for enterprise networks, we felt that that might be a little bit too complicated. So we said, why don't we build AI automation that when we go to our management dashboard, when we make configuration changes, those cellular wireless configuration happens behind the scenes automatically. We call that Salona Systems. Um, so this uh, is another way of looking at the solution. Um, you have a SaaS platform with a variety of different software-defined functions across the board, whether it's on-premises for mobile core, uh, or you can deploy that mobile core in a variety of different environments, or different cloud functions for configuration, monitoring, optimization, and AI. Um, RAN and infrastructure components, straightforward. And at the very top, we are supporting a healthy and growing uh, technology ecosystem, device makers, compute environments, security, uh, IT security platforms, developers who might want to build on our APIs, their own dashboards and their own data collection systems, et cetera, and application providers, robotics vendors, video surveillance, uh, camera providers, uh, computer vision, um, uh, application developers, et cetera. So in a enterprise network, it lives uh, as an overlay, right? So I have your existing layer two, layer three network, your app infrastructure, your existing wide area network configuration for broadband internet connectivity. Um, we take advantage of that infrastructure and we say, why don't we enable cellular wireless for devices that might need that additional express lane, additional lane of connectivity, and additional spectrum. Maybe we can provide them a faster way of operating on a clean spectrum. And maybe it's you're looking for robotics infrastructure to be more reliable. Maybe you want your voice traffic to be more reliable. Maybe you're, you're a higher ed institution and you're looking at your facilities infrastructure to use a different network than your student Wi-Fi across the campus. Right, so we also see this as a way to integrate within the enterprise network, but also enable network segmentation between your existing connectivity options for wireless, Wi-Fi, public cellular, and private cellular delivered 
Barcelona. What we don't want to do is while we give you this additional lane of connectivity, we don't want to make it look like an island of its own that doesn't really fit your mode of operation. There are lots of device options, by the way, in the market. You can go to salona.io slash devices and see tons of options listed there. We also publish integration guides, how to connect a Lenovo laptop to a Salona network or a Samsung smartphone or a Zebra tablet or a Motorola push to talk device. We have written articles pretty much about all of those to help you understand what it really takes to onboard a device, to connect a device to a private solar network from Salona. All right, so uh, with that, the secret sauce, every startup has a secret sauce. Once you decide that there's a use case, um, robotics, facilities, IoT infrastructure, maybe voice over IP, maybe video cameras, maybe computer vision sensors, whatever that application might be that requires this express lane, reliable connectivity option, um, we said, how is this gonna really work with QoS settings and security settings that already exist within the enterprise facility? 5G network slicing tells us that we can split a telco network between different enterprise environments. We can have one customer split it can take a portion of the public seller network and another enterprise take another slice from the telco network. But 5G network slicing did not necessarily specify within the same enterprise, what if I have not one, but many use cases? I have video surveillance maybe, robotics using gateways to connect to the network, maybe voice over IP, maybe I have some tablets using uh, point of sale. Right. So how do I make them all work in a single network? Uh, this was not possible before we enabled micro slicing. It's a patent pending technology. It enables you to define latency, throughput, and packet error rate metrics for each of these applications that are critical to you. It allows for them to integrate with a layer two, layer three subnet that already exists and a VLAN, VXLAN configuration that already exists in your infrastructure, which might be tied to other AAA NAC policy infrastructure as well. We monitor these slices in terms of quality, in terms of KPIs, how are we doing with the throughput promise, how are we doing with the latency promise, so that you can focus on application quality management and not only infrastructure uh, status monitoring. So micro slicing is really shown best in action. We do have a live demo on our website um, I will make sure to share the link with all of you joining as well. It's a very small, mm -hmm. simple URL, salona.io slash start, as in starting, salona.io slash start. We'll give you a 10-minute video demo of this uh, capability in action. In addition, it will also show you from start to finish how a Salona network is designed and planned and built. Um, and it will if you are up to reading more material on Salona, it will also give you access to our Getting Started Guide. Well, one thing that we have decided to do very early on is to be open and transparent of how our system is being designed, deployed, and configured. So all our technical product documentation is available on that URL, salona.io slash start. All right. So one thing that I have to mention um, given that Cradle Point is a valuable partner to us, as well as the Step CG, they have also been quite excited about micro slicing technology. They have actually were the one of the first ones to try it out in their um, environments and for their customers. Uh, and with micro slicing, we're able to extend their differentiated services capability on a Cradle Point router, not on the wide area network uh, side, but also on the local area network side. So you might have multiple video cameras, for example, hanging off of a cradle point router. You might have other wired devices maybe connected to it. Each one of those devices can be assigned to a different device group on the Salona network and can be applied to different QoS settings. And we can actually do this automatically. We can learn dynamically from the configuration of a cradle point router in the way they assign quality of service settings 
And we can learn from those settings to apply the right micro slicing policy. You may not even have to uh, configure these manually on our system once the cradle point routers are set. So uh, there's a demo video of it. Um, going back to my previous comment, we like demos and we like documenting and we like sharing. So there's also a demo video of that capability at salama.io slash cradle point. So uh, with that, uh, we want to leave a healthy room for any questions that might come up. Uh, I'm going to pass it back over to Greg, and we'll start monitoring the questions tab uh, for anything I can answer. Thanks again for joining us. And Greg, over to you for our second poll question. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, so what are the critical capabilities for private 5G in your environment or your customer's environment? Um, so if you wouldn't mind popping in your answer here, whether it's ease of integration or open ecosystem of devices, you can read. Uh, there's five selections here. Make uh, as many as you feel are appropriate for your business or for your customer's business. And we'll talk about these in just a second. I'll give you just a few seconds to pop that in. All right, perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, so we will roll into, as Ozer mentioned, some live Q&A. Um, so first and foremost, let's go back to the, the first uh, of the poll questions, if you recall, uh, which is around uh, the solutions uh, or the services, I should say, that you would like to partner with someone like StepCG. Um, the, uh, the runaway favorite uh, by at least a third, a third was end-to-end -end managed services followed closely by radio installation and network integration. So for Dan and, and Todd, do you find that folks who do reach out to you are looking mostly for this end-to-end -end managed service? So is that in line? Or do you find that it's something else, whether it's performance monitoring or a device deployment and configuration that in this poll was a little bit lower on the scale. I just want to make sure we're not we're not having a webinar of outliers or if this is in line with what you're seeing. Dan, you want to take that? Sure, I can take it. Um, yeah, it is in line. We're seeing it more and more where um, people do want, you know, the entire service managed end to end. I mean, there's still a very large component just like your survey showed today, right, of people that are just curious about how to get these things installed, uh, what it takes, um, all the design work and modeling that precedes the design, um, all that sort of stuff. So it's really a combination of both. So I think you could add, you know, how to install these things to the other group as well. It's just that they realize that their expertise doesn't lie in that realm and they will um, rely or fall back to someone like us to, to help them out. All right, perfect. And then the second uh, poll question was around, as you <laughs> just saw, uh, critical capabilities for private 5G. Uh, it's a close one. I think the, the top two in particular are almost neck and neck. Uh, the ease of integration with the enterprise network is the biggest one. Uh, uh, secondarily uh, to that is the scalability across multiple sites, both indoors and outdoors. Uh, so Ozer, I guess there's two parts to this, uh, asking you this, and I'll also Todd and Dan, if you'd like, is uh, one, um, do we find ease of integration tends to be the leader in the discussion points or the pain points we're looking for? Uh, and are there any use cases where this is clearly the case um, or any use cases you'd like to dive into as a segue? Yeah, I can, I can take that. The idea, I, I think, the, um, that we always bring together with our customers is um, if there's a critical connectivity requirement for a new generation of application or maybe an existing use case, but you're trying to improve their performance, um, that's usually the starting point. Um, those cameras, um, voice over IP handsets, ruggedized tablets, uh, IoT facilities, infrastructure, outdoors, perhaps robotics, uh, they carry a lot of importance and weight for an IT organization's budget spending on CapEx as well as OPEX. So um, that project needs to stay up. That critical infrastructure needs to be uh, supported at a very, um, uh, very high quality. Once we identify that, Next question is what problem we're actually solving for that application. Is it, are we providing a clean spectrum? Are we uh, offering a lower latency of connectivity? Are we trying to maintain a specific throughput level for that application? Uh, or is just a matter of covering a very large and challenging area with cellular wireless? 
Uh, once we put those two things together, then um, justifying any type of investment in a Solana infrastructure becomes, of course, much easier. Um, and usually our customers and our partners would like to see this technology in action. Once the use case is defined, once we want to validate uh, these technology value props, we want to see that in action. And sometimes it's uh, the lab environment. Sometimes it's a temporary um, deployment. Sometimes it's the production environment. And as an enterprise networking vendor, you don't have the luxury to mandate what type of infrastructure you're integrating with because you don't know what has been designed prior to you. So you cannot mandate your requirements to what the enterprise network looks like. So we have taken the approach of let's be flexible in integrating with any environment uh, and hiding that complexity uh, from our customers. Um, and that is usually the third ingredient. A lot of the times, I think as an industry, we talk about use cases a lot. We talk about the value of uh, cellular wireless a lot. But one thing that we miss to include usually as an industry is what is it going to take to run it in my environment? And I think we have offered and continue to offer a lot of great ingredients to meet that challenge. Um, but that that's my long answer to a short question. Yeah, yeah, Ozer, and I, I would jump on there just b being on the actual side of actually implementing this technology for the enterprise. I'd say the the number one ease integration to enterprise network. I, I think actually I know uh, out of all our deployments we've done in the ecosystem of uh, private cellular networks. Um, because of the approach and the capabilities of the Solona infrastructure, it's uh, a two to three to four X faster for us to, to actually turn up and integrate within that infrastructure. Um, you know, and, and then I, I think leading up to that also, we've really optimized the planning aspect. So our planning capacity analysis, looking at the environment, for, for the technology and coming up with a high level budget, looking at the backhaul uh, um, and doing all that, we've really gotten pretty efficient with that, both with outdoor environments and with indoor environments. And those require different tooling and, and kind of capabilities. But but overall that ease of integration, we talked about, um, you know, there, there, we've had numerous examples of these deployments of uh, being able to easily map into that existing policy for for the uh for an enterprise network as well as the segmentation the vlan and routing and security aspects so it, it it's really becoming uh, much like deploying an ap i like the the wording you use for your e node bs um and it's made it very easy for us to really uh, deploy that for for customers so All right, this is the question. This is actually a personal question for me, for Dan and Todd. I've, I'm a Porsche fan. The reason why I say this is that in uh, the 70s, there was a Porsche 917 called the Pink Pig. And they painted it pink, and they gave it all the different butcher lines on it, and it's famous. I feel like the cows should likewise be uh, very uh, – the livery should be cow uh, Holstein colored. I, I mentioned in the chats too. Any plans on making your cows into actual cow design? <laughs> I, uh, we, we've gotten um... – yeah, right now we have the blue cow stickers uh, for our colors, but yeah, I think we'll take all feature requests and put it into the, uh, you know, uh, plan of intent category and and assess accordingly. But you know, I, honestly, that that's kind of we we had similar requests with the cellular technology, especially uh, you know more of it during COVID, but just disaster recovery environments, hurricanes and, and things like this. So uh, one of the, our uh, lead architects for the technology and cyber, Ed Savage on this call, actually designed a set of cases to harden the cradle points with power and connectivity so that these things could, so you could quickly get connectivity. And similarly, we've taken that approach early on as a company you know, for the last two and a half years, we've been in, in this space doing this. So we decided to invest in the cow. So we can also do that with the private cellular environment. We saw that, saw that with the Bardstown Bourbon Festival example. So some of our customers have asked us, you know, can can we, you know, get one of these cows and, and we can definitely help with that. It's in our core business. But, you know, this thing may change into, you know, your 
I don't know if I'll ever hit the Porsche category as far as uh, <laughs> sexiness, but um, yeah, for we'll, we'll we'll take any and all suggestions. Fantastic, dare to dream. I'm a marketing guy, and I'm already working on the merch now. We'll we'll collaborate later. I've got a whole line of clothing ready for this. But in the meantime, um, you know, I thank you for that. And one of the questions that I also wanted to ask to the the panel here is: Are there any particular use cases, whether it be supply chain, uh, whether it be higher ed, healthcare, or any others, where you're finding a a runaway lead in the marketplace of folks that are on the bleeding edge or, or wanting to in the, in, put this into their environment, anyone or any best case use cases that you could uh, share with us? Oh, um, I, I, you know, we kind of touched on this, like the, the one that hits home for us as a company and, um, you know, state, local government education. It, a lot of us came from that. Uh, our com uh, people that work at our company came from serving our communities, right? So I think, um, you know, anytime we get involved with public sector first responders and these um, underfunded kind of areas of our communities, like education, and be able to keep up with technology and and, and kids getting left behind. Th those are the ones uh, we we I think are special. Um, you know, nobody's in. So, so I'd say the digital divide ones by far has been like, you know, you see the teachers and the students and um, how much different they are. That's made a really big impact. And so, sometimes the best way of technology is uh, improving, improving lives, right? Improving, you know, how we do things, not necessarily being the cutting edge of a uh, bleeding edge of, of uh, what's possible with technology, just applying it to, to these in these ways. And obviously with, with, with the evolution of private cellular technology and 5G and, and what's possible there, we'll just keep adding more value in these use cases. But I, I'd say that's probably the number, number one. Um, and then just yeah, I, without going into too many other ones, I think all of them are unique and how you can connect and communicate, for example, in airports or in, in, in an environment where Wi-Fi wouldn't scale for the number of IoT devices and cameras and throughput and quality and being able to manage it effectively like in a healthcare system. Um, so it really enables you to think differently and, and really have control without expanding your operational cost too much. Right. It's not a it's not a it's just an augmentation to your land. That's why I do like the marketing around it, because that's really how how it's implemented. It's it's another part of your land infrastructure extended and with with very easy, easy management capabilities. So you don't have to hire a whole lot of staff. Um, and that's kind of our goal as a managed service provider. We kind of have like three flavors. We like to enable our customers if they if they can to to actually do embrace the technology and manage it. We also, you know, and we have like three flavors of just being able to take maintenance or take give them some visibility tools or just do the full man service. Those are our three kind of tiers. And as a you know, as a company, as a principle, we kind of always have is is do things pragmatically and and enable our customers to to learn and, and continue to use the technology without us having to do it for them. But but we also also have that option. Great, that's what exactly what I was looking for and more. Um, and Ozer, I had a question for you. Um, in the um, in the the earlier uh, parts of the year, which is not very long ago, a few weeks ago, you had some predictions for 2022. Uh, any of those predictions you wanted to share, or encourage folks to go back and watch the video or, or read the uh, the article? But any of those predictions that are applicable to this today? We're talking about you know benefits of 5G lands. Where do you see this uh, happening? Uh, uh, where do you see the future in 2022 and beyond uh, as it applies? that stuff you just shared in the media, which I encourage folks to read. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to see a um, pretty big uptick in private cellular installations. We're, what we're hearing from our customers is, okay, this is another wireless technology. I like wireless. I like cutting cables. I like moving things around. Uh, I do always have more devices, more applications that are um that demand wireless connectivity i think when we back in the day um i also spent quite a bit of time at uh, aruba when we were trying to bring wi-fi solutions to market um since wi-fi became such an inherent part of our lives when we think about a network connectivity we also think about in the enterprise setting in the work setting 
we also think about just wireless. We don't think about anything else. You know, in the past outdoors, we always thought about wireless because, hey, we always used a public cellular network. And the enterprise that also changed from wire to wireless. And now it's just pervasive wireless everywhere, across the WAN, across the LAN. When we think about a network, it automatically translates to wireless. So we're seeing much faster response from our partners and customers and their ability to kind of connect the dots between our technology and what they're planning to do. So um, my prediction is a far greater number of deployments in this upcoming year, which is very exciting for us. And we'll love to share those use cases and examples as we go along throughout the year. Great. And we've uh, come to the end of our session now, uh, but we do want to stay in touch after this. So in addition to reaching out to StepCG, if you have any questions, you've heard of the services they have, the depth, breadth, and scale that they have to offer, please do reach out to them. In addition, um, Salona, well, we like to have you uh, visit us anytime uh, to go on the journey with us or on 5G land and also to uh, to meet us. So in the very near future, we will be at WLPC, we'll be at MWC Barcelona, we'll be at Hims. You know, a, a lot of uh, different events that are happening both virtually and in person. We'd love to see you there as well. Uh, but until then, uh, please do stay in touch via our digital sites. And uh, we thank you for your time, your attention. Anything else before we wrap up, uh, panelists, uh, and we let these folks have their day back? I'm good. Thanks a lot for uh, joining us. Happy 2022, everyone. Stay safe. Stay warm. Uh, and thanks again for joining us. Dan, the hot. Well, thank you, Ozer, for hosting and Greg for uh, having us here. And thank you, everyone, for your patience and, and shoot in questions or, um, you know, reach out with, with any kind of inquiries you have there and, and stay strong. Rock on. All right. Thank you all. And thank you for joining us today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay in touch. Bye-bye now. Thank you, everyone.